Hi, this is Danny Crouch here from chooseyourchapter.com.au, the listening coach. I'm here with Richard Patterson today, and we're going to learn to listen with empathy. Empathy. Welcome, Richard. How are you? Yep, fantastic. Great to be here. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So um, what is it about empathy, and, and why do we need to listen to you uh, to learn more about uh, listening with, with empathy? Uh, well, I guess really um, empathy's got some fantastic advantages individually and business-wise and uh, virtually any aspect of our life, if we can become more empathic, um, there's all sorts of benefits for us. Um, the, I guess the key function of empathy or the key component is learning to uh, look at and understand and view things from somebody else's perspective to kind of get a handle on how they're seeing it or how they're understanding something. So obviously that sort of covers the whole gamut of uh, life, really, um, and help you be more productive in whatever it is you're doing. Oh, cool. So uh, what's the main problem or, or issue or, or concept behind people that aren't empathetic or whether they are? Or... Um, I guess the, um, if we take, you know, it sort of varies in different contexts, I suppose, but if you take um, a business, just take it from a business perspective, if you're approaching something from the perspective of um, how is this other person receiving what I'm telling them or what we're discussing, how are they seeing it, kind of um, getting a handle on their worldview, then you can understand what, what's important to them and what's not because at the end of the day, if you're wanting to do a business um, transaction with somebody, it's uh, the way they're seeing it is far more important than the way you're seeing it. And what they see as value is what's important, not what you see as value. So the more you can integrate empathy into what you're doing, the more it's going to serve you in, in the end um, of what you're trying to achieve. Okay, cool. So. Uh, who's at risk of having this problem or, or issue? Can you narrow it down to a particular type of person, or, or, or um, who will benefit? Actually, who will benefit from from learning about this this concept or issue or, or problem? Everyone. Um, so, like I was saying before, um, individuals. So, just in the way that you do friendships and relationships with other people, if you can see things from somebody else's perspective, uh, it's going to make in in uh, relationships and interactions with other people a lot more um, successful, whether that be a friendship or teammates in a sport or, um, uh, you know, romantic relationships, marriage, um, that those sort of relationships and also in business, um, seeing where, where somebody else is coming from and how they're interpreting things is going to be um, a great way to help um, get you towards whatever the outcome is that you're aiming for. Mm. Mm. So what, what do you think they'll gain from overcoming this problem or understanding the, the concept? Uh, more, more success, I think, in more success in anything that involves interaction with other people. So whether that's business, whether it's personal, whatever level it's on, if you're operating from a more uh, from a base of empathy, um, you're going to be more productive in whatever it is that you do that involves other people. Mm. Okay, awesome, awesome, loving this. So, uh, why that risk, or or why is it so important for them to solve the, the issue or the problem? And for um, and I suppose this, why will this concept transform a person's life? Absolutely. Um, if I'm, uh, for example, if I'm selling you a car, if I'm a car salesman and you come into my um, showroom um, and I start telling you about how powerful this engine is and how wonderful it is and how fast it goes and when the turbo kicks in and all that sort of stuff, um, but your, um, you know, Scottish heritage and you're more interested in how economical it is, <laughs> then I'm breathing hot air. You're going to get sick of me telling you about how fantastic and how powerful it is. You're not interested mm. in how powerful that car is. What I need to do is I need to have some empathy for you and find out what it, what is it that you're looking for. Um, 
you know, in looking for a new car, what's most important for you? And um, what what sort of things really matter to you? And, um, you know, why? what's wrong with the current car that you've got? What are you looking for? What are the reasons for your changing cars? Um, and if I find that, then I'm stretching with your itches, um, which is going to be far more satisfying and, and you're going to give me a lot more time a day if we're talking about the economy um, of the car. You know, this one that we're standing next to here is a V8, but we've got a... Um, uh, you know, one of those hybrid engine cars over there, which is, you know, real cheap to run. That's where we should be standing and talking over there. Mm, mm. I hear what you're saying. I, I, I was actually, and this might be on the same sort of part, plane, and correct me if I'm wrong, I was talking to a, a plumber the other day and they were talking about how they had a bit of a um, setback with a client um, where I understood it as though um, they were looking about uh, how they're going to set up the bathroom. And this woman, had, all she had in her mind was where she wanted to have the bath and the shower and the, and the recess and all that sort of stuff. And apparently, he kept talking about where the toilet was going. Yes. And she basically turned around and said, look, you know, you don't seem to be listening to me. All I'm interested in is where the, the, the shower and the bath are going. Um, look, I'm probably not going to go with you. I'm going to go with someone else. He said, you paid more attention. Is that Yeah, you know absolutely. What I mean? Yep. And I think back to um, the day I used to be a primary school teacher and... I can vividly remember this particular kid. I was doing like relief teaching, and I'd come into this class, and I was warned about this real problem, behaviour problem kid in the class, and he was very distracted and all that. And I kind of got a little bit of a handle on how this kid operated, and um, I, I grabbed him aside and I said, "Listen, mate, I the way that I work when I'm not in the classroom is that I like to have an under under this primary school." I like to have an undercover detective, um, you know, in the classroom watching what's going on while I'm not um, in the classroom. But the thing is that it's really important that my detective can't blow his cover, so he can't let anybody else see him see him giving information to me or or blowing his cover in front of other people. So um, I've sort of watched you, and I reckon you'd be a great undercover detective. Uh, would you be interested in being my detective for me? And of course, this kid got really excited about that and everything, and um, and he was just an absolute treat to teach. I didn't have he, the kid did not put a foot out of line, and um, the the reason that that worked was I went into his world and saw how his world operated and worked from his perspective. I gave him a job. I made him feel important. I gave him a focus. He was too busy to misbehave because he was focused on taking notes on, you know, watching who was misbehaving and all that. Mm. Um, and, you know, there, there's an example of operating, like that's in the classroom, um, you know, operating from a base of empathy, um, understanding that kid's world and entering his world and coming up with a solution based on his worldview. Awesome, awesome, loving it, loving it. So, okay, so we've sort of understood where you've identified that in other people. When does a person first actually notice or recognise they have the problem themselves? Or, the or lacking empathy? Uh, yeah, yeah. Or when, when's, it, when's the concept relevant in their life? Um, look, I think the, the concept is uh, relevant virtually from birth. Um, look, I'm I'm a bit of an empathy fanatic, so maybe I <laughs> um, maybe I overstretch it, but um, I just think that every aspect of our life can improve if we become more empathic, and not just as individuals, but as a community. Like when we see conflict going on, if if we could see that conflict from from the perspective, or when we're having conflict, if we could try and switch around and, and try and get an understanding of where the other person's perspective is, then I think a lot of our conflict, you know, often we have conflict with other people um, and we're actually talking about something different but we've misinterpreted what the, what each other's perspective is. Mm. Um, and if we um, operated more from a base of empathy, perhaps we'd sort that stuff out before it became conflictual. Mm. So where are they 
emotionally, physically, mentally, when they when they feel this is affecting them? Um, look, I think um, a lot of people that are angry, and this is kind of flipping it around a little bit, mm. um, but I think a lot of people that struggle with anger issues, it's because they feel that nobody has any empathy for them, like nobody understands them, okay. yep. and that's why they get um, into a rage because they're not being understood. But, um, you know, there's that old saying that if we only sought more to understand than to be understood, mm. um, how much progress we would make. So I think if we if we flip that around and instead of getting upset, nobody understands me, take the responsibility on yourself and say, I need to understand others more. Mm. It's not that I need them because I've got no control over whether you understand me or not mm -hmm. or whether you care about me or not. The only thing I've got control over is my level of empathy. Mm. So instead of me getting angry about you not understanding me, maybe what my focus and my view should be is to turn that around and make it my responsibility to understand you a little bit better. Awesome. Yeah, love it. Love it. So uh, how have people tried to uh, uh, I? deal with the problems, those are all the concepts, how they try to sort it out for themselves? Um, I guess in sales training a lot, you know, they talk about um, creating rapport. Mm -hmm. In a sense, that's kind of what empathy is about, but my issue with that is that that's a little bit manipulative because you're creating rapport to get your way. Mm -hmm. So there's a bit of manipulation in there. However, if I make an attempt to enter your world and to get to understand your worldview, then I can, um, you know, we're, we're much more likely to have a positive outcome with whatever it is that we're doing together mm. if I've taken a step of um, entering your world and trying to get an understanding of your worldview. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. So I think you've sort of pretty much answered there how it works and how it doesn't work. It's, it's how much that someone's invested in, in someone else, is that? Yeah, that's right. Sense? And and how much I want to take responsibility for what I can take responsibility for. Mm. I can't take responsibility about whether you see things from my perspective or not. Mm. or whether you understand me or even want to understand me. Mm. I can take responsibility for whether I care about how you see things and um, care about seeing things from your perspective. Mm. Um, that's all I can take responsibility for. And then, and I've got a choice whether I choose to do that or not. I just think that the world would be a better place if more people decided that empathy was important. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I think I'm understanding this, and I'm, I'm not sure if the listeners are as well, obviously, because I can't be in, in their heads, as you're saying. Uh, so from a perspective, what can be done better? So is, are there certain steps that someone can follow to become more empathetic or to, to listen more with empathy? Yeah, I think sometimes you can learn, learn a lot from people from what they don't say as much as you can from what they do say. Mm. Um, so sometimes you've got to look for those clues about what somebody's not saying. Mm -hmm. um, and and also I think to to dig if you're not if you're not sure, um, ask another question. You know, instead of assuming yeah. that there's uh, assuming why somebody's answered the way that they did. Mm. Um, you know, like like for example, let's go back to a car, I'm trying to sell you a car. And your preference is on the, um, you say, oh, no, 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 I don't want the eight cylinder, I want the, I'm interested in the four cylinder. It's not up to me to make a decision about why you want the four cylinder. Is, <coughs> is your interest in the four cylinder because it's more economical? Or is it the fact that you've got a son that just got his license and you don't want him mm. having the power? Mm. The okay. power of a V8. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, so I need to ask you another question. So, uh, so what is it um, about the four cylinder that's more attractive to you? Mm. Um, and ask that question instead of instead of just stopping and saying, 
are you interested in the V8 or the four cylinder? And you said the four cylinder. Then me deciding why you answered yeah. that. Yeah. Ask another question. Mm. So what is it about the four cylinder that's more attractive to you? Mm. Um, so then I can find out. You know, the more I can find out from you, and it's really about effective questioning. Um, but Robert, it's it comes from it's actually a step back from that. Mm. It's actually caring more about why you're answering the way you are. I've actually got to have that care there first. Yeah, yeah. Um, to to what um, to to drill in, and I've got an end goal of finding out as much as I can from you from yeah. questioning. Okay, so ask better questions. That's a great step. We've actually got someone, Dean, uh, who's actually writing a chapter on asking better questions. Yeah. So interesting you bring that up. They all seem to tie together. Any yeah. other steps you can you can think of uh, that, to, to get a bit more clarity on how they can listen with empathy? I, you know, I, I um, have a, a really interesting um, challenge that I put to myself sometimes. When I get frustrated with somebody, I stop and think, um, what if that person is actually, um, you know, doing the best with what they've got? Like we've all got different tools to do life with. And I think often we make a bit of an assumption that people have got the same toolkit that we've got um, and we get kind of frustrated and, and angry and, you know, and kind of look down on people if they're not doing quite so well. But um, sometimes I think if we come from the perspective of just if we got into the mindset that an assumption that that person's doing the best that they can, and then what can I do to help empower them to do better? Mm. So not that they're being an idiot, not that they're being stupid or that they don't get it, but stopping and thinking maybe they're doing the best that they can with what they've got. Um, and that's what I need to establish is where can I assist them to help equip them better to perform better in, in whatever um, environment or context it is that we're interacting at that time. Awesome. Love it. Love it. So uh, who's been successful at solving this problem? And I, I don't mean a particular person, but uh, what sort of characteristics would you see in someone or values or, or what experiences would they have had? Um, I've just recently read a book called um, Blue Ocean Strategies, and that's really sort of about um, creating new markets, I guess. And it talks about the guy that um, started up Cirque du Soleil. Mm -hmm. And he started Cirque du Soleil at a time when um, circuses were virtually becoming defunct. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he hunted around, he found that people were actually wanting something that circuses were offering but not in the current form. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a great example of a guy that um, operated from empathy because he thought that there was... There's something that people want there, but he tried to extrapolate and pull out what is it that people want. Mm. Um, and, you know, they wanted that sort of entertainment and that kind of, um, you know, that tense environment, like not in the in the art centre, you know, mm -hmm. or, yeah, yeah. you know, not, not like a different environment, but high-quality entertainment. And he kind of put those things together. And, you know, I can... If Cirque du Soleil is not a story of success, there isn't one. Yeah. Um, so that you know, that was an example where a guy you know worked out what was it that people wanted. I guess Apple is a great example of that as well. Is that um, you know people want the experience, not so much the equipment. So Apple, I you know um, identified that what people actually want is an experience, mm. not so much a product, mm. but they want the experience that that product gives them. Um, and, and you know, I think Richard Branson's a classic example of all his virgin branding. He looks at um, how can we improve the customer experience. So he's looking at things from the um, customer's perspective mm. um, and how can we deliver a better customer experience. And that's fundamentally how his business... He actually looks for businesses or industries that are renowned for offering poor customer service. That's what he looks for because he says the product or the service is probably good but the customer service is bad. Yeah. So he 
picks on an industry like airlines was a classic example mm -hmm. where people always complained about the service that they got from an airline. Mm -hmm. So we said, right, people are dissatisfied with the service they get. I'm going into airlines. Wow. And that's how he choose, chose that industry was that it was, um, you know, had a reputation and railways in the UK were the same. They had a reputation for poor, um, uh, poor customer service. And I guess to a degree McDonald's, you know, had tapped into empathy what the people want, predictability. <laughs> so you can buy a hamburger anywhere in the world and it'll taste the same. Yeah. That people are actually more, strangely enough, people are more interested in knowing what they're going to get than what they get. Yeah. So they might have the worst hamburgers in the world, but you know what you're going to get. Yeah. And that's what skyrocketed them to be one of the most successful brands in the world mm. is what you wanted to predict, what customers wanted predictability. Mm. And that's what they honed in on. It's not the best hamburgers in the world. It's predictability and um, consistency, consistency is yeah. what they looked at. So to me, that's an example of empathy. Mm. is saying, what does the customer want? Mm. Let's build a business around what they want. Mm. Yeah, awesome. That's a lot of great strength. I didn't know a lot of that stuff about Richard Branson. That's really interesting from a, from a marketing concept, find out what the customers want and go and do it. Yeah, and find out um, an area that's uh, an industry that's weak. Mm. And that's why he's gone into finance. He's gone into credit <laughs> because financial institutions are now known for providing poor customer service. Yeah. Telecommunications, he's gone mm. into that because everybody talks about the crap service that you get when you ring up with a problem. Mm. Mm. So he said, okay, where people are saying they're getting crap service, that's where I'm going to go and provide good service. Interesting you say that. I was talking to someone in uh, the home loan section of the bank the other day, and I said, so um, how did you feel the first time you got a home loan? And she said, I, I don't actually have one. And I thought to myself, how on earth can that woman appreciate what one of their customers is feeling like when they're think, sitting there thinking, am I going to get this $200, $500, $1 one million loan for my first home? How, how bad would I feel if I get rejected? Hmm. Um, if that person's never been through that, how could they ever treat or, or, or respect that person? On, on a much simpler um, playing field, I'm like that. I'm an absolute copy, copy snob. Like I really, I really am a snob when it comes to my coffee. Mm. And when I go into a new coffee shop, I ask the barista how they have their coffee. And a lot of these franchise chains and stuff, you know, they're 15, 16 year old baristas behind the machine, and they don't even drink coffee. So to me, straight away. That says they're not going to know how to do because I do a long black. Mm -hmm. They're not going to know how to do a long black because they don't even drink and they don't get the difference between an agun and a van long black. So, but if I find a barista and I say, how do you have your coffee? And they say short black or long black, then I think I'm halfway there. I reckon this guy's going to, you know, got a good chance of doing me a good coffee. Um, and, you know, that's, I guess in, in a sense, that's almost like reverse empathy. You know, I'm finding out if this guy understands me yeah. before I become a customer. Yeah, yeah. And in a sense, it's kind of that it's like reverse empathy, um, which you know can be used to. In that scenario, my target is to get a good copy. Oh, okay. So yeah. I'm using, in a sense, using empathy to ensure that I get the best outcome. So you know, I'll, I'll find out a bit about that barista. Find out is this the right coffee shop for me to buy my coffee or not? Like yeah. the Nivy, if it's a fifteen-year-old kid that says I don't drink coffee, it might be best that I walk down the street to the next cafe yeah. and ask that for his stuff. Yeah. You know, so um, you know that's that's a different sort of um, setting, but it's still applying. You know, the concept of that empathy, even though it might be in the reverse format. Mm. Love it. Yeah, love listening to what you got. So rich. Um, okay, so we're getting a bit more of an understanding of what what motivation there is behind yourself and, and empathy. Um, so I'm guessing you've implemented this into your life in some way, if you've got some sort of business idea or where, whereabouts do you do work that can provide empathy to others and, and whatnot? Yep, I, um, I started a, a business many, well, you know, probably 10 years ago um, 
working for a new, setting up a new division for a recruitment business and marketing their business to the not-for-profit sector. And I used a really, really successful email marketing campaign and it was mega successful. Like within a week, I was writing business from the email campaign. Recently, I started um, a recruitment business of my own and I used virtually the exact same um, email marketing campaign. However, this time, two and a half thousand emails out, not one response. And I stopped and thought, why did I get responses before and not now? And clearly, the way people communicate has changed. And um, so I started asking people, you know, what do you get emails? What do you do with them? You know, these emails are not working. And the, what I found out was that most people feel like they just get too many emails and if it's not somebody that they know or there's not something that right immediately gets impact on them, they don't even read it. So there's a good chance that a lot of those emails that I sent were just an absolute waste of space and a waste of time and effort and energy. And so then I thought, well, what they're saying is that most people won't respond to the masses. So you've got to somehow or other get your head up above the crowd to be noticed. So what I decided to do was to implement a communication process with prospects and customers that actually makes me stand out head and shoulders above the rest. So doing that by email or cyber communication, I'm just one of the crowd. And mm. no, nobody notices me because I'm just one of the crowd. Mm. So funnily enough, I decided that the way for me to stick my head up above the crowd and to be noticed and to be seen is to actually go back to the old snail mail and what? actually send somebody a, what I now call a physical message, not a cyber message, because I think there's a bit of a um, connotation with cyber communication that it's not actually real. But if I send you a physical message, there's kind of a different concept there that that's, that's real. Mm. So what I did was I hunted around for way, how can I en masse efficiently send physical messages to people, not cyber messages. And um, you know, through the mail is the most efficient way to do that because whilst now our inbox is full, our letterbox is empty. Yeah. So we don't notice the um, inbox messages, the cyber messages, because our inbox is full. But by crikey, we get excited when there's a message in the letterbox mm, yeah, because our letterbox is empty. Absolutely. So therefore, the message in the letterbox has impact because it stands out from the crowd, whereas the message in the inbox doesn't because it's part of the crowd. Mm. So is this like a Hallmark card? Um, the end result is that the process of getting it isn't because clearly it's way too expensive for me to send out, you know, multiple Hallmark cards every day mm -hmm. um, and and also it's too time-consuming for me to sit down and write um, cards and choose cards, you know, go down the shop every day and choose cards and then, it's five bucks each, mm, um, mm. and then I've got to write in it, and then I've got to put it in an envelope and then pay for a postage stamp and send it. Mm -hmm. That's not sustainable, um, you know, in um, long term. Um, so, uh, so I developed the concept of being able to send out a, a physical message from my computer, which I thought was quite revolutionary. Okay, so that's obviously what your your website's got. I think the people watching can have a look at it on the screen, but if you're just listening, what, what what's the website address? Yes, it's physicalmessage.com. Pretty easy to remember. That's why I chose it. Yep, yep. Um, that's it. Physical with an F or a PH? PH, <laughs> as in, you know, physical training, something I'm not very good at. Yep. Um, so just physicalmessage, all one word, .com. Cool. So anybody from anywhere around the world can go to the website design a card and uh, have that card print personalised, printed personalised, mm. put in an envelope and posted without me even leaving the desk. Mm, I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of happy men out there thinking I can now send my wife or girlfriend a card 
and not even have to leave the desk of the office. Well, the beauty is, even better than that, is if you know that Valentine's Day is on the 14th of February next year, you can design your card now and schedule it to be sent for <laughs> Valentine's Day next year. The only thing is you've got to make sure you've got the same Valentine next year yeah. or it could get ugly. And they live um, in the same address. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but if you wanted to, um, you know, sit down um, and and do all your nieces and nephews and, and cousins and aunties and uncles and grandmas and grandpas and mums and dads and kids, all the birthday cards at once, mm. you could sit down and do a session of that and schedule them all to go at the appropriate time. Mm. And if you're in business, say if you're a mortgage broker and you've signed up a uh, mortgage with a new client, you've obviously got their date of birth in front of you, mm. you can then schedule into your um, system sending them a birthday card next year, whether whenever it is, if it's August later this year or January next year, mm. you schedule to send a card. But the other fancy thing you could do is you could actually send a birthday card to their mortgage. Okay. So send out a birthday card to celebrate the anniversary of their mortgage. Yeah, right, okay, cool. I don't think there's too many. I think you want, coming back to this idea of your head popping up against, the, you know, above the crowd. Yeah. I don't think there's too many people that would have a, a loan or a mortgage where their mortgage broker has sent them a birthday card mm. to, to their mortgage. Mm. Well, even on that note, um, I reckon you could just jump on there now and send your wife, husband, girlfriend, whatever, a card just for the sake of sending yep. a card and they'd appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Just for thinking of you sort of thing. Yep, for sure. Mm. Yep. So um, now that we've got it here in front of us, what's is it? Is it a quick process? Is it going to yeah. take half an hour? No, or? no, no. It only takes a few minutes. So yep. if you just card. click on the send a card. Okay. And what is this like? Ten, twenty bucks a card? Is it? I think no, you mentioned something. No, no, no. It's um, it it that it kind of varies, but you'd be looking at um, if you pick one of the cards that's and that's the easiest way for us to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, if we just pick one of the cards, it's already there. Okay. So, so there's all these categories down the left-hand side, obviously. Yeah, that's right. So all if those we, occasions. you know, they, if we just go back there, referral. Um, you know, referral. Say, for example, a, a client has um, sent you a referral. Mm -hmm. um, then you can you'll get a a gallery of cards, mm -hmm. um, basically set up for that now. Got to love it when the there. internet slows down and gives yeah, you a bit, a bit of time to think about <laughs> yeah. what you're going to say next. <laughs> um, so you can actually design your own card and add your own photos and all that sort of stuff. Cool. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, mm. I'll um, I'll just do this. Yeah. Simple. Um, yeah. Well, something we do in the coaching world, and you know, if someone want to use these ideas for prospective clients, um, we obviously befriend people on on Facebook. And when we uh, find someone, we, we and this is why I love this concept, I'm definitely going to be using it. I'll probably go onto their Facebook page and just borrow one of their photos and actually put it onto one of these cards and send it off to them as a nice to meet you. Uh, yeah. Here are my contact details. Please you know, give me a call if there's anything I can do. Yep. Yeah, what, what I do often when I meet somebody at a um, networking function is to send them a card that sort of, if the networking event had a theme to it, like I did a poker night, Mm. As a networking function, oh, wow. so I got I just got a picture of you know a bunch of cards and something about poker just off Google mm. images, yeah, and created a card with that, and then on the inside I put a photo of me. So, ah, okay. So then when they <laughs> when they get that card, you know at a, at a networking meeting you might have met fifteen or twenty people for the night and think who the heck was Richard Patterson, and this is certainly a face that's great for radio instead of forgotten. <laughs> um, and uh, and I appreciate you putting the image of the screen up and not me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that when I've got a photo of myself in the card, people, oh, that's who Richard is. Mm, um, mm. And then it's, uh, you know, reinforcing that. So just for simplicity's sake, let's do create a postcard. So you just um, up here. Yep. click on a, yep, create a postcard. And what a postcard is is basically a postcard. So, you know, your, your picture on one side, and then you, you know, your text and your address and so forth on the other. Mm -hmm. um, so we can just pick um, 
any sort okay. of postcard. Yeah. So let's just put thanks on okay. the front. Again, That'll do. We can do that later. I'm guessing the best yeah. way to do this is uh, whereabouts are your contact details? Are they on here? Can they contact uh, you? Yeah, if you go back to the um, back to the front page. So the menu. Yeah. And up in the top right hand corner. Right or left? Uh, just close. Close. Close there. Okay, I went the wrong way. That way is it? No. And then just click on send out cards. That one? Yep. If you click there, that'll go back to um, the physicalmessage.com the home page. Mm -hmm. um, and if you go onto menu, okay, um, and just click home, should uh, I think that is the home. That's okay, go down about. to um, about mm -hmm. no, uh, oh. go to opportunity. Income opportunity. Yeah, that'll do. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we're going to move on to this yeah, anyway. I, yeah, this is laid out a bit differently too. Um, so that that sort of gives you an overview. Um, that um, just go back down a bit. That uh, revolution of kindness. Yeah. So that just goes through an overall explanation of, of um, how it all works and mm. um, what it is, and the two sort of aspects where people can either you know send cards or they can actually look at it as a um, uh, initial stream of income if you oh, okay. to do that. Um, okay. so that. Depends how people want it. Most people just want to, you know, be able to have access to creating their own cards. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, some people might, you know, want to look at it for the um, for the bonus of, you know, having some uh, an extra income stream. So uh, that's uh, how that all works. So if you just so if you just contact, go back to physical, they don't contact this email address. No, either. go back to States, go back yeah. to just um, reboot physicalmessage dot com at the top there, and um, so there's actually a um, your computer format in the computer what I'm using. Mm. But, um, the cookies might be attached to something different, I suppose. Yeah, so there it is up the top. Oh, okay. There's me, hey. and there's my contact details okay. up in the top corner. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. So if you click on the contact details, you can get a phone number and an, um, an email address and okay. send me a message through there. All right. Well, if you want that, you can. You know where to find it now. We yep. won't um, put it on the screen because he doesn't want phone calls at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. All right. Well, that looks awesome. I'm definitely going to sign up very, very soon, as in as soon as I get off this line because um, yep. I love the concept and I'm going to start using it. Sorry, average cost of a card, is that? Yep. So um, the way it works is points. And if you get a, um, if you buy 100 points, it's $38. So that's 38 cents per point. Okay. So if you sent a postcard that was already set out there, that would be 38 cents and 70 cents postage. Okay. So that would only, that would cost you a dollar and eight cents to send a postcard to somebody. Yeah. So, and you can personalise the message on it. Yeah. Um, and then that, means that gets printed and then posted on your behalf. Okay. So and as soon as you hit send... I haven't bought a postcard for a while. How much would a postcard there for in the shop? $2.50, something like that, and then on 70 cents on top. Okay. And you've got to go to the shop. Yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot of um, sense to me. So I actually sent out some postcards for Christmas, living on the beautiful Gold Coast as we do. Mm. Um, just to rub it in a bit, I found this really cool picture of Santa sitting with his pants rolled up on the beach on a deck chair with his feet up on the SD having a beer. Mm. And I just said, Happy Christmas. If Santa's late, you know where to find him. <laughs> and I just created that myself. Um, now, because I created the card myself, it was an extra point per card. Okay. So that would be, as a postcard, that would be 76 cents plus the 70 cents. Yeah. Um, but then I can also create that card and send it to a database. So if I had a bunch of clients mm. um, and I was the CEO of a company, I could get all of our um, company dressed up as elves and I'd just have a Santa, take oh, a photo, okay. and we could send that out as a Christmas card yeah. and upload our, the database of our, of our clients. Yeah. And then that will send to dear Jim, dear Julie, dear Bruce, and everybody yeah. individualised. Um, card out awesome. to everybody on their data. Yeah, I, I think I was mentioning to you before, which is what I used to do, or absolutely used to do now. Now I'm sending these cards. Um, I used to get a picture frame, which would cost, you know, six, seven bucks, something like that. I'd um, go to the print shop and print up a photo, which is another couple of bucks. Um, draw up some letters and stuff like that, which is next to nothing. And then postage for this 
which yeah. is prime. So I'm looking at somewhere around fifteen twenty bucks after it all. Yeah. Um, so bring this down to two three dollars. I'm yeah. And and at the end of the day, let's cut to the chase. The card's going to have as much impact. Mm. That's the, the bottom line. Mm. Um, Absolutely. And and particularly because people, um, if it's a really and they're really good quality, the cards are just superb quality. Mm. Um, so people tend to you know put them on their desk or whatever. Yeah. Whatever, and okay. and it becomes a conversation starter for their people that come into their yeah, office yeah. and say, oh, what's that card over there? Um, okay. Is there somewhere that you can try one and get one sent to yourself? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again, yeah. check out the I site. Can go through, I can go yeah. through all of that. Jump yeah. on the site or, or contact uh, Richard and um, we'll yeah. go from there. But this yeah. is awesome. Unfortunately, we've uh, run out of time. We've been listening for well over half an hour. Yeah. Um, hopefully, everyone's staying on board. So we've found out now where you can find Richard and Physical Message and, and learn to listen with empathy, which I guarantee you right now I've learned a lot more about. And yeah. um, thanks for that. And I really appreciate your input. And um, all our listeners do too. Yep, no worries. It's been yeah. great and I hope it's helped someone. Yeah, I'm sure why <laughs> it's helped me already. But, um, Fantastic. Thanks for listening. I'm Danny Crouch from chooseyourchapter.com.au. Uh, you know where to find us on the MyQuest Facebook page or on our website, chooseyourchapter.com.au. Thanks a lot and see you next time. Hopefully you'll be listening. Bye.